Godfather's Pizza situ situation when he was the CEO of Godfather's Pizza and many other corporations that he helped to work out for and so forth. Uh, and he's just a, a great self-made man, a true American story in, in, in this country. So I admire him for that. And by the way, he can sing. Have any of you heard this man sing? Wow, I, last week is the first time I've heard this stuff. I mean, I'm thrilled. He should do that more. I just think it would go well. The thing I want to talk to you about tonight is the 999 plan. There's a lot of misnomer out there. And so I'm going to do my best to explain it to you in, in the most basic of terms. You can then, at the end of my talk, just fire away any questions that you may have. How about anything? Uh, first of all, as a businessman, I really love this plan. The 999 plan is dynamic, it's far-reaching, it's out of the box, and let's be honest, it took a lot of courage for this man to put that out there. He was the first one that really did put out a dynamic plan. The way this works is, and it's revenue neutral, and what that means is what Herman wanted to do was take a look at how much revenue was being produced now coming into the government and make sure he came up with a plan that matched that as best they could, so it's revenue neutral. And so he came up with this plan. The first thing this plan does is gets rid of the IRS code. And, you know, there's a Nancy Pelosi that said unemployment is, is a job producer. Well, maybe, maybe 15, 16,000 IRS agents will find out if that's true or not. But, so the IRS code goes away. I think that's the, the biggest single hit that you can have. That's a $500 billion hit that just is eliminated cost. But the other thing that happens is the death tax also goes away. Now, I don't know how you all feel, but you know, all of us work our butts off all our lives. We're taxed all the way through that. And we wind up with the residual of all of that. And we'd like to give it to our kids or our grandkids, whoever we want. The government's not entitled to that. Not a dime. Barack Obama thinks 50% of it ought to be his and the government's, but so there'll be no death tax in this plan. Capital gains tax goes away. You have a 9% corporate tax, flat, 9% instead of 30, 30 to 35. You have a 9% income tax, flat rate. Everyone pays 9%. And then you have a 9% on the call on a sales tax. But the way this works is, and there's a lot of confusion in this, if you buy a pen for a buck at Staples, you don't pay a buck nine under this plan. You pay the buck. Why? Because the tax is built in before the retail level. But it's at the retail level. So Staples is going to wind up, and they already know that, paying their 9% of their gross sales to the government. But you don't pay that on top of it. You pay that. Within, and we have 22 to 27% taxes, cumulative types of taxes now built into all of our products. What are you doing now? So it's going to be going down to none. Again, flat. Now people will say, well, that's a new tax. Yeah, it's a new tax, but you have to make up for all the revenue that he's, he's reduced or gotten rid of. And that's part of the way that he does that. But think about this. As a businessman, I'm only paying 9%. I get to keep far more of the fruits of my labor. So I get to keep more of those profits. What am I going to do with them? I'm going to hire people. I'm going to expand my business. And everybody like me is going to do the same thing. A rising tide lifts all boats. And those people in this country that are on the lower end of the income spectrum are going to be forced, sometimes kicking and screaming, to work harder and for more money, yes, but they're going to come up with that time. People's habits will change with a dynamic economy. The other thing, this is a great idea we came up with. You know, we talk about the trade imbalance with China and other countries. It certainly is there. And the, and the money manipulation with China and other countries, that's also there. We need to make things in this country again. How do we accomplish that goal? Well, one of the things that Herman came up with is to incentivize businesses to purchase American-made products. How do you do that? 
let's say I needed to buy another set of computers for my business. And I decided to buy American-made computers. I get to write the full value of that off my taxes in year one. That's huge for us. If I buy foreign-made, it doesn't happen. I'm not going to get the benefit. You can buy them if you want, but you're just not going to get that benefit. Buy a Ford, you can write that whole thing off. Now you buy a, well, I just bought one. Nissan, you may not get to. But I have a question about the computer for the example. How do you, they're not even doing I that. know, they're hybrids. <laughs> where, where do you get them from? The question that he's asking is, you know, because you've got components that come from multiplicities of countries, and Herman said he hasn't figured that one out yet. Yeah. He's just being honest, but you, we will. You drive the end, I mean, now somebody would create it because now there's a demand for it. That's exactly the point. The, the minute that you start to see the incentivization work, more and more people are going to say, holy smokes, there's now there's a demand where there wasn't, and now we'll start making these things. And they would be probably a bit more expensive simply because we've got all of this, this offshore cheap labor that we've been using. But you'll bring jobs back because you'll incentivize businesses to buy American, even though it's a bit more expensive, they get a tax benefit that overrides that expense. It's a benefit for them. It's ingenious. It truly is. I mean, I, I, I love it. So that's another thing to look at. The other thing with this 9% uh, tax is business to business purchases. If my business purchases things from Staples, I'm exempt. The businesses are exempt from that. The way that would be handled, I'm sure, is in a tax write-off. But basically, that also uh, is an incentive for businesses. So business to business purchases are also exempt. Um, so again, I think you can see the dynamics of this thing playing out. Uh, and I see this becoming something that occurs quickly. It will absolutely generate millions, in the plural, of jobs very quickly in this country. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Small businessmen like me are going to love this. We're going to be hiring people left and right. But you've got to get them in there first. It's critical. When you talk about Republican responsibility, conservative values, this man exudes those values. He's pro-life all the way, believes in the Second Amendment. He believes in the Constitution as originally written with its amendments. And he carries one that's all raggedy. He needs to change that. He has to get another one. Carry it one. But he, he, he's a firm believer in our Constitution. And he's certainly, of course, uh, because he's really not a politician. Herman Cain's the only one on the, on the stage that isn't a politician. He's a, he's a businessman. And so, of course, he believes uh, in the free markets, in capitalism. And that's how we drag this country out of this mess. But we've got to elect a Republican president that understands that. We really do. And we've got to send Barack Obama back. This man has to take a long trip to nowhere. I don't care what happens. Well, the whole hypothesis starts, though, with the businessmen that own a company deciding to put their newfound wealth back into the economy by hiring us. And at this point in time, I'm becoming a little skeptical because that certainly isn't what we're seeing happen in the last few years. Um, all these companies that got the bailouts, they, they didn't do anything with the money that they were supposed to, or the money went overseas, or they gave the executive bonuses. What guarantee is there that the businessman is actually going to do? Well, the reason why you're not seeing any, any reaction, there are trillions of dollars in cash just sitting the reason why is there's right. uns uncertainty, complete right. uncertainty. Nobody's going to invest. Why would you invest oh, in, a, in, in, in a, well, no, seriously, right. why would you invest in a new car manufacturer when you just saw Barack Obama take it over? All right, the people who invested their hundreds of dollars in, in, in purchasing stock in GM got wiped out. They didn't care. You know, you talk about uncertainty. You can't be doing things like this and have a free market, too. The other thing is Obamacare. Obamacare is, is an absolute business killer. It, it is the single biggest thing, in my view, that's stifling uh, any reaction growth because it already, because it's starting to worm its way in, it's already generating higher, higher insurance premium costs and also, also higher costs for businesses and businesses to do business. So all of this has to be resolved before you're going to see any major market reaction. 
Um, and, and that's not going to happen as long as Barack Obama is president. It just isn't. This man's an ideologue. Everybody knows, even the Democrats in the Senate, understand that everything he's doing is contrary to good economic growth. He rewards failure. He rewards failure. And what does he do with success? You're seeing it. You're seeing it. This Wall Street, this, this, this Occupy Wall Street movement, who's behind it? Move on, go to George Soros, and of course Obama, he's liking it. He thinks this is great. What you're standing up to going after, you know, successful people. Did you see them up yesterday with the guy that drove, happened to drive by the group in the Mercedes in, o in Oakland? Got attacked. Car just mm -hmm. stood, large crowds out beating on the car just because he was driving a Mercedes. He didn't get any help either. He had to just pray for his life. He had to drive. He kind of bumped one of them a little too heavily. But that's the way it is. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is the kind of stuff that we see going on in the country. And to me, it's misdirection. And they should be in front of the White House, not down on Wall Street. Okay? That's where the problem has been called. Um, so anyway, um, what I'd like to do uh, is, uh, oh, two other things. One is energy. One of the things that I can tell you that Herman Cain believes very strongly is that energy is a national security issue. I think we all agree with that. It is becoming more so now than ever before with what's happened in the Middle East. Libya was a great success, wasn't it? I mean, two days after the, 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 they, they caught Gaddafi and killed him, they declared that they're going to be a Muslim com country and live under Sharia law. That works well for us. <laughs> but the point is this. Um, we need a president that is unafraid, and Herman's unafraid, to come right out and say, we're going to drill. We're going to drill off the coast. We're going to drill in Anwar. We're going to go after our natural gas, clean coal, all of the above, and we're going to do it quickly. You want to see job creation and good paying jobs occur very rapidly, you sign an executive order that says you're going to go do that. Heck, if you even just announce you're going to do it, watch what happens to gas prices. It will plummet. So this is what this man is about, and, and I, I, at this stage, want to throw it open to any and all questions that you may have. Yeah. Right. Nice job. Thank you. I'm watching the, the debates in our guys, right? They're attacking each other. If you can take it to these guys, go easy. Don't attack each other. Attack the enemy. We'll be better off because we're shooting a lot of ammo, killing ourselves before we even get into the battle. Keep it simple, the American spirit, exactly what you said, these yep. children and with their dad there, that's what it's all about. It is, and let me make a comment about that's that. That's it. My, it's a, thank you, and that's a very good and astute comment, because if you've been watching the debates as I have, uh, this is the kind of stuff that I don't like to see. And unfortunately, you got a lot of the, the, the debates have been run by liberal moderators. They do like to see that stuff, you know. That's a, Look, we have enough ammunition to go after Barack Obama, all eight of the people on that stage. That's my personal view. And my personal view is there's enough differentiation between them all that all they got to do is tell us, hey, what are you going to do for the country? What are your, what's your plan? What are your policies? And let us decide that way. I couldn't agree more. I think that, I think that, and Herman Cain, and I will mention Newt Gingrich, both of those fellows have refrained from doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Why do they agree? to stand in front of a bunch of liberals and get sliced up like salami when they know what's going to happen. You know, this is a mind game with the liberals. They want to trip them up and they give them hardball questions. They wouldn't even dream about Barack Obama or anybody yeah, else. Why do they give them one debate out the door, we got business. Instead you know, of I, I, you know, we're not in their shoes, we're not up on the stage, but I, I, I'm just telling you personally that's how I feel. But one shot, good. that's yeah. it, good night. Well, yes, please. When you talk about the energy thing, um, to go along with that, wouldn't there have to be an awful lot of deregulation to go along with it? Yep. Because uh, right now, all these green policies and everything else is just that's yeah, how those jobs work. It stifles, it stifles the whole thing. So, in order for to drill, you still need to do a lot more than just drill. Yeah. Herman Cain, you probably heard him talk about the Environmental Protection Agency and what he would do. You know what he'd do? He said he's going. He's going to get an oversight board that consists of people that have been, you know, messed up by the Environmental Protection Agency, and he's going to put them in charge. 
Uh, I think that, I think that uh, uh, the tax situation, of course, as stifling as it is, probably even comes second to the regulatory, uh, the stifling regulatory uh, rules and regs that our businesses have to comply with. Not only federally, right here in the state of New Hampshire too. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. They do everything they can to put roadblocks in front of business rather than take them and remove them. It is government's job to create an environment in which small businesses can flourish. That's what they're supposed to do. They're not supposed to, you know, build barriers, but that, that is unfortunately what they do. And the federal government does a real good job of that. So, and, and Herman has made it very clear he's going to absolutely uh, get rid of a lot of those regulations because he knows he's a businessman. Bill. Jack, I, I, I want to get local here. I want to get down to the sidewalk, okay? And this has to do with 999 because I've already heard it. I've heard people in New Hampshire say that I've come across, it's just another tax. We don't have a sales tax. We don't have an income tax. Now all of a sudden we're going to get an 18% tax. At ground level, what does a Herman Cain supporter say to that person who brings this up? Well, you're paying at 15.2 federal withholding now. It's going to go down to 9. All right? The other thing is we don't have a state sales tax in New Hampshire and we're not going to have a state sales tax in New Hampshire as long as Bill O'Brien's the Speaker of the House, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so, so, or an income tax. And you're not going to have uh, a, a add-on sales tax nationally either. You won't see it. It doesn't matter what state you purchase a product in. If you, if you as an individual, buy it at the retail level, the 9% the is built into that product when you buy it. I don't care if it's a pen, a computer, a belt. I don't know why I said that. It's just I had to get a new one. So, but, but I, I, uh, so, but that's how this thing plays out. That's exactly how it works, and it makes sense. I'm interested in that nine percent sales tax. We know in Europe they have a, a VAT tax as a smaller percentage, but it's at each stage of production. For instance, if you were mining aluminum, it would be at on the mining and shipping of bauxite, then on the melting process, then in the forming process. So you, you, it's a cumulative tax. <coughs> All the way along the process of production until it reaches the marketplace. So we're not talking about the same thing. No, we? it's not a VAT tax. It's a single, one time, 9% tax at the retail level. But it happens inside the purchase price, not outside the purchase price. Because it it's, it's just on sales, not on services. Like the VAT is on lawyers, on, you know, it's, it's not just when you go yeah. to the store and buy something, they get you on everything. We were asked. Uh, we were asked that question about services, and uh, I don't have the answer yet. I don't think so, but I will have to get back to you on services. I doubt it, but but uh, I don't want to give you an definitive answer. What, what effect does nine 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 have on states that have is state income tax? Well, the state income tax is separate and independent. Anything that goes on in any state in our country is going to be kept separate from this. There's, anything they do is isolated, so it doesn't matter. Does it affect if you have a 10% state income tax, now you have a 9% federal income tax, now you have a 19% tax. Base. No. No. You've got a 10% state. If you, what's, I don't know, what's New York's? What's the sales tax in New York? All right, well, Maine's 8%. So you've got an 8%. The income tax. Oh, you're talking about the income tax. Income tax. Oh, it, it doesn't matter. The income tax right now, the withholding is 15.2. And right, so we're going to lower it, or, or Herman is, in, in, to 9. Federal, no. Federal only. Federal, 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 federal only. That's what I'm saying. Anything to do with the states is separate and independent from this. It has nothing to do with the, with the states at all. Oh, so he hasn't addressed anything about the states? Well, and, and he shouldn't be. Yeah. No, he, he is, he, that's not his purview. It's just like today. It's just, to the, just last year you paid a federal tax in, in well, not New Hampshire. In Maine you paid a federal tax in a state, Maine state tax. In Massachusetts last year, you paid a federal tax and a Massachusetts state tax. Tomorrow, on a 999, you will pay less federal tax in Massachusetts, but you'll still pay the extra Massachusetts state tax. It's, this doesn't change the mess. Very good. She gets it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, good. So does yes. this do away with the IRS totally? Yeah, you good. It gets rid of the IRS code predominantly. I mean, you're going to have a few deductions. And there's going to be the need for a few phases, but you're going to have some deductions that people... Right. The whole code goes away. It's gone. 
He'll have a new one that'll be a few pages long. That's it. It's the way it should be. There's nothing wrong with that as long as long as the IRS agents say what is going to work is you want to get it. Believe me, the economy is going to balloon. It's going to boom, and they'll all be working very quickly. They, they all will be. There's one thing maybe you want to take to Mr. Kane. They got this Department of Energy. It's been around since the energy crisis in the 70s. They have done nothing. They got a $30 billion budget. There's cost problems. Not a drop of anything. So why do we have a bureaucracy like that in existence being funded? And what you, what, hey, look, what's I, I, Herman is aware of that. The other thing is he's aware of the Department of Education is another target, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a lot of, 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 of bureaucratic overhead that can be called out of this government and make this country, and you won't even miss them. Well, yeah. actually, you will miss them because things will become easier. Yeah. Jack, let's say that Herman was to be elected, serves two terms, they get another liberal in there after him that wants to make 999, 1515, 15, 15, or... Or anything. What, right. what, what yeah. stops that from happening? What Herman's going to do, and uh, he wants to have both the Senate and the House have a two-thirds uh, majority vote for any... Something very similar to what we what Bill was talking about with the state. The two-third majority vote to increase any tax. Right. Now, that doesn't guarantee it either. Right. But while he's president, anything that would come across his desk to change it, he would veto. But after he would become president, legislation would govern, and hopefully they would stick to it. But look, let's be honest. I mean, you can only do the best you can do. Sure. There's no guarantees uh, in, in the future other than the ones you build in. And even then, you know, if you, for some strange reason, we decide that we're going to elect overwhelmingly Democrats, why would we do that? Uh, but that, you know, you never know. What about charitable giving? About what? Charitable giving. That's going to be deductible, which is great because that will encourage it. This is all good. You're doing deep planning, I think, premature because you have to explain it. You can't explain it away in a minute debate. And your opponents can take that and twist it in many ways of who's going to pay and everything else. This is maybe premature before you get elected. Okay, if you kept it simple, straight, honest talk, American spirit, things that people sitting in the house can understand, they got a better chance of getting elected rather than getting into real business, which most 90% of the American people don't care, or don't want to care, or can't care, or don't have the intelligence. Well, I mean, but if you kept it real simple, American spirit, back to work, forget all the details, 9%, go <laughs> away this. Less ammunition, and you can I'll gently disagree with you because yeah. I think it's very important because now Perry has uh, his plan out. Okay? But the Democrats never come up with any plans other than promises. I think as Republicans we need to at least make sure that people understand what we stand for and that these plans as they are presented are explained and they need to be explained definitively. Is anyone in here, at least insofar as it got the explanation tonight, is there anyone in here that's confused? No. Okay. So that's the key. I think that Herman's plan is very effective. And if it's explained enough, and if, if you get this opportunity, then you understand it. And that makes all the difference, I agree. And by the way, uh, Charlie Spano back here, he's the chief He's the chief field operator for the Kane campaign in New Hampshire. He brought me a fresh batch of 999 explanation uh, handouts. So you can grab those on the way out. What's the, what the media? It's the media. Won't explain it properly. They won't explain it to the people. They won't. We're getting it tonight. But that, and that's what has to happen. Herman has been doing it, and he's going to have to do it. His staffers are going to have to do it. I'm doing it. Uh, we'll do the best we can. But you're right. The media is liberal. Yeah. I think there are a lot of people that are fearful in the nation, looking at specific big power money interests that control the media are in a portion of Wall Street that deserve criticism. Yeah. The cartel capitalists, and they actually feel they control candidates in both parties. That's a real fear of a lot of people. That no matter what happens, we go in the same direction, perhaps slower, and unobtrusively, but still towards more intrusion into the family, taxes, and 
crushing small business. You know, where is Herman Cain in, in that whole in that whole thing? Because he has been a member of a Federal Reserve Bank. Well, he, he, he worked for a branch, and, and, uh, and, and he did. But he is also called for an audit of the yep. Federal Reserve. I mean, he's not against that. A regular audit is the Federal Reserve. Uh, but I want to, if you want to expand a little bit on, on Occupy Wall Street, if you've paid attention, you've, you've, you've seen most of these people have no idea why, why they're there. I had a Columbia University student say the other day in an interview, I'm here because I have student loans i got to pay, and I'm getting a check every week for being here. Yeah. A lot of them are being paid, being there. Coming through Soros. Yeah. Yeah. MoveOn.org. They're, they're, they're all involved. Yep. You've got the stolen. You've got socialists. You've got the socialist parties there. You've got the communist parties there. You, you've got the anarchists there. And you, Oakland just came on the news tonight as I was driving here that the police chief is really upset because it's the core of those folks that caused such a turmoil last night and they're afraid they're going to continue to do it. Um, so you have that. Now unions are being co-opted. They're showing up and they're joining forces with these people. And I wish my dad was a, my, alive today. He was a 30-year union fireman. He would never buy any of this. Never, not for a minute. He fought in the Second World War in the, Japanese, in, in the Pacific Theater against the Japanese. And the first thing he would say is, this is an outrage. He said, I'm an American. All of us in this room are Americans before or anything else. And that's what we've got to start to focus on. That's What's it. going that's, on? That's your model. Can, can I change gear for one second? Mm -hmm. um, just, Time's up. What are we going to do about the borders? <laughs> <laughs> Herman Cain, secure the borders and absolutely, positively, <laughs> enforce the laws on the books. There hasn't been an administration that has done that in the last 12, 16 years. We need to make sure that we enforce the laws that are on the books. This administration is serving and reversing state laws. Arizona, I think there was somebody, there was another state that just did it too. South Carolina. They're actually going in and undoing through the court system uh, their efforts to secure the borders and to, to go after illegal immigration. So he's very strong on that. Jack, we already have a considerable amount of uh, federal excise taxes on some products. Uh, for instance, uh, Robin, uh, Robinson Pittman Act is an excise tax on every gun, ammunition, bowl, fishing pole, what have you that you buy today that most people don't even realize exists. Those monies go into or are supposed to be dedicated to hunting. For instance, it's hunter it supplies money to the state for hunter and so forth. Um, another excise tax is our, is our fuel taxes. Uh, there's a lot of federal tax on the fuel. Will the 9% just be added to those? No, they taxes? go away. It replaces. That's what's so great about this. You know? And it is so cool. 9% excise tax. Do you have a yes, preference to buy American, as you said? Um, is he concerned about China manipulating currency more? If you go with buy American goods, and what's his feeling on trade wars? Because if you're going to, as a presidential candidate, push towards buy American, and I'm all for buy American, but if you're going to push that on a platform like the presidency, you are inciting a trade war. What's his thoughts on that? Yeah, basically, what he's basically saying is you still have a choice. You can buy you can buy any product from any country that you want, except if you buy an American product, and it may be more expensive. You are going to get a great tax incentive for doing it. And as far as I'm concerned, that's attractive to a businessman like me. But who knows? I mean, I, I once in a while, might like a, a Japanese-made product more than an American product. And the value of the deduction may not be uh, significant enough uh, incentive for me to change my mind. And I would buy a uh, Japanese product. Or China. I don't know about Chinese. But anyway. What are you doing in a, in a case like Ford? Is it supposed to be an American company? Now they have cars in some of their vehicles. They have come down to Mexico, okay, down Well, the other issue you have is I bought a Nissan truck, okay? It's all assembled here. And so Herman's got to think these things through, and he will. He's a very smart guy. There are, there are hybrid situations with respect to many products because we've lost so much of our manufacturing. So we're going to have to make some decisions, and he'll make them and come up with, you know, he may say if it's 70% American, then we consider that to be uh, eligible and valid. Who knows? I'm not, that isn't what he said, but it, it could be something like that. I'm going to go back to using a gasoline tax again if you want to 